Template theory, feature theory, and structural theory are all theories of pattern recognition, in which our brain is trying to make sense of the world and all of its ambiguous information. The recognition of patterns is one of the things that humans are actually very good at. Computers, though, are not. Template theory is characterized by the notion that every possible visual experience you see from sunrise to sunset is already stored in your brain. Your brain is sorting through all of the different templates that it holds to find the correct match. This can be expressed through the idea of a lock and key method, with each sensory experience having a perfect match. Evidence for this theory comes from a study that used depth electrode recording to find specific cells that would respond to only a particular stimuli. They found a specific neuron that would only respond to pictures of Jennifer Aniston, and a specific neuron that would only respond to pictures of Halle Berry. This indicates the high specificity that neurons in our brains have. One of the main problems with template theory is the idea of storage. Where are all of those templates being stored? If this theory were true, we would have an overwhelming amount of templates that we would need, but also a giant amount that we would never even use. Feature theory breaks things down a little bit further than template theory, using components or features of the experience instead of the experience as a whole. The general idea behind feature theory is that in order to decrease the amount of storage needs, we have analysis by synthesis. When we see the letter A, we break it down into two diagonal lines and one horizontal line. Our brain then reconstructs the elements back into the whole to reach perception. Analysis by synthesis is characterized by those three different steps. Step 1 is to extract the information from the given sensation. Step 2 is to match those features to ones that are stored in long-term memory. Finally, step 3 is to find the best match of an object through using the features in long-term memory. Physiological studies have supported this theory, like an experiment conducted by Hubel and Weissel. They used simple features such as length, movement, or color of bars, and recorded activity in cat brains. They found that there are specific neurons that responded to each of those characteristics individually. The main problem with feature theory is that our world is just not as simplistic as this theory assumes. There are many more complexities with perception beyond just length, movement, and color. Another problem is the issue of reconstruction. It would be highly difficult to know the order of each individual feature and where it goes without using some other system. If features were combined improperly, the end result could be a very different perception. Structural theory takes pattern recognition a step further and looks at elements called geons. Geons are three-dimensional simplistic objects that are combined to create a perceptual object. Different combinations lead to different objects. The main study looking at structural theory was performed by Irving Biederman. He took five different geons and looked at the rate of recognition in combined geon objects when the object was flashed for 50 to 100 milliseconds, with either continuous line segments hidden, producing a 30% error rate, or line intersections hidden, producing a 55% error rate. All of these theories have different angles and perspectives on pattern recognition. However, one of the main faults they all have in common is only looking at bottom-up perception. When we cumulatively think about pattern recognition and perception, we have to take into account all of the top-down mechanisms that are present.